Uh, hello, and I'm very excited to be talking today to Amy Blanding and Britt A.M., two of the artists performing on the Mom Celebration album. Uh, my name is Kate, and I am a member of the Music on the Mountain Society Board of Directors. Um, before we get started, uh, I want to mention that I am um, uh, sitting here on the unceded territory, or sorry, excuse me, the unceded territory of the Clately Tanay. Um, and I, I think about that often in my in my new job and in jobs I've had in the past, but it feels like it's it's taking even more more precedent in my life at this moment. Um, and I'm grateful to be in a community of people who who hold me to account and remind me how important that is on a on a regular basis. So uh, hello, Britt, Amy, um, thanks so much for talking with me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So the song is called Mama's Headed North. Um, it's written by Amy. Really? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know until this moment what song you had done. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering. I was wondering if you'd let it slip at some point because of course you guys are friends. Um, but no, full surprise. Awesome. Okay. So <laughs> yes, this is the 11th release off the album of cover songs recorded by musicians who were scheduled to be at the Music on the Mountain Festival in 2020. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that project after the interview, but of course the, the centerpiece, the focal point of these interviews is giving you, Amy, a chance to hear the song for the very first time. Um, but before we do that, maybe we'll just start with like a little little intro. Where are you at right now? How's how's your life looking? What are you, what are you spending your time on? How about we start with you, Brett? Sure. Hey, um, so I am here also on the unceded um, territory of the Clay Legion and I, um, yeah, life's pretty, pretty decent for me at the moment. Um, really excited to share this with Amy and hoping that uh, I did it justice and that she um, likes it. Um, and yeah, I, I've been um, keeping busy trying to get outside when it's not smoky and enjoy that fresh air and um, yeah, just kind of like puttering around the yard, kind of still riding the pandemic sort of pace <laughs> um, before all the gigs start happening. I see them, um, I already see my calendar sort of like filling up really quickly over the next couple months. So it's both exciting and a little bit terrifying as I've kind of, you know, my, my plants especially have gotten used to me actually like paying attention to them and taking care <laughs> of them you know <laughs> they live they live to see another day uh but uh yeah i'm i'm doing pretty good yeah awesome how about you Amy? what's going on with you cool oh i'm also um in what is known as prince george on unceded traditional territory of the clayton today i'm very grateful and um humbled to be in this place and i just came back actually from my first music festival in two summers i was in bella coola on new hulk traditional territory with uh, Danny Bell, Bryn Porter, and Elijah Larson backing me up, playing on that stage, looking out over the mountains with eagles soaring, and it was, oh, it was good in a lot of ways. It got, um, shook some dust off this old body that um, hasn't been doing a whole lot of music for a little while, and so um, it was awesome. It was just such a well-run event, and they took such good care of us, and we managed to get there despite wildfires literally blocking the path and um yeah it just kind of relit the the flame um of performing music for people and and connecting with other artists and with fans and um god it's so it's so fun it's so fun but you you know you don't do it for so long and then it kind of you forget about it. So I'm just really grateful that I got a chance to do that with my friends and um, missed some people that were supposed to be there who couldn't make it because of that lovely wildfire, but just grateful that everyone was safe. And yeah, I'm just hanging at home and um, working in the garden, keeping my plants alive. Nice. Um, all right, so any kind of initial thoughts, anything? Um... Anything you want to mention before we play the song, Brett? Yeah, I. so one really cool thing about this project is it got me to set up my um, home recording situation again, uh, which I hadn't actually um, done for, for a very, very long time. And this working on this project really reignited my um, my passion for this kind of work. I really, really love engineering and I love um, recording work. And um, so I, I just, yeah, I have to say thank you for uh, 
for inviting me to be a part of this because um, in turn, I ended up like recording my own EP, which I just released a couple months ago, um, how it's going. Um, and I don't know that that would have happened without me actually having had to set up my gear to do this project first. So um, I had a lot of fun working on this song and uh, sort of um, just really, uh, you know, it was just a, a one woman effort. So, um, <laughs> you know, playing all the parts and, and kind of um, reimagining some of the, um, some of the parts that I was hearing in the beautiful original version on um, Amy's album down the line. So um, yeah, I, I just, I feel really grateful that I was invited to be a part of this project because, because it's actually spurred um, a new sort of uh, path that I'll be going down. Like I've been um, uh, speaking with Connor Pritchard and I just had a, um, a session with him yesterday and I'm going to be kind of like apprenticing with him to, get into um, full on engineering work again. So I'm, yeah, just really grateful. I, I don't know that this path would have actually like began without me being invited to be a part of this project and without me having the like privilege to work on Amy's beautiful song. So um, yeah, I, I, that's, yeah, that's my so exciting. <laughs> so, so exciting, Britt. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I'm really, uh, I'm just grateful for the opportunity and um, yeah, I hope you like it, Amy. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, let's let's listen to it. Here it is. Uh, Mom is headed north. Bye. 
Uh, that that was Mama's Headed North by Amy mm-hmm. Blanding, covered by Bird AM. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> oh, you guys. No, I don't even know where to start. Um, oh. How are you feeling, Amy? <sighs> oh, my God, Britt, that was amazing. I'm so glad you liked it. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a, like, well, it's a whole new song. Like it's, it's such a good song. Like he, he, it feels like it's like this, like a whole new, th- I feel like I just got a new Brit AM song that is like oh. my new favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you did it such a good job. I just like was immediately taken by the instrumentation. It was unexpected, like, um it's different from some of your stuff so like fuck you're talented um i just oh god (laughs) you're so talented (laughs) thank you wow yeah that was stunning yeah i'm quite verklempt so (laughs) you go ahead you just talk So, so Britt, did, did you know immediately that was the song you wanted to cover or, or did you kind of dive in and and take some time to figure out which one was the, was the one? Yeah, I, um, originally I thought, oh, well, I want to do Down the Line. Like, I really like that song. Um, it's really fun, uh, for me. Well, like, okay. So I was telling, I actually messaged Amy, um, after watching the live stream of, um, her and her band performing at Bella Pula. And I was like, you know, I, Like, and this is legit, like every time I watch Amy play, like either under my breath, if we're live in the same room or if I'm watching a live stream, then I'm like singing the um, harmonies along to all her songs. Cause I just, I love the music so much and I just feel compelled to like express it, like sing along. And and so down the line is one where I'm like, yeah, like that's one that I'm like, it's, yeah, I love singing that one. So I thought it would be that. Uh, And then after listening to the album a couple of times, yeah, I just, I really um, was feeling Mama's Head in North. And uh, yeah, it just seemed to resonate with where I was, um, you know, in sort of my emotional space at the time. So um, so it felt like um, a good opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, work on something um, in a more cathartic sort of um, emotional uh, way, as opposed to just, you know, picking something purely based on like, uh, instrumentation or what I felt like I had available to me at the time. I thought, you know, I'm going to pick the one that, that I'm feeling the most and then uh, just uh, work with that, what I've got and, and make something yeah, completely like different. The, <laughs> the emotion for it was so obvious. It's really funny because like that song and, and Down the Line actually like we started out being like, like they were written for the lyrics. The lyrics were really, and it was like coming from a like quite a raw emotional place and then as they've like gone to the next iteration and and with bands and performing and stuff like that they've both become kind of like almost rollicking country tunes in a way and um I still feel that rawness when I play them but I feel like your interpretation now of Mama's Headed North has brought it back to that where it's like like I can feel your emotion I can feel you know, that pain or that the coldness of that place of being alone or being burnt out or whatever, whatever interpretation you're taking from those lyrics, like that your choices brought that back again. And mm-hmm. like, um, yeah, I just, I, I re-feel that. I think that's like, it's deeply personal. Like, thank you for that. That's really like a really cool, Thing to re-experience. And Amy, at, at the Bella Kula, Kula Music Festival, you, you introed that song with, with a story and a little bit of background on, on how you came to write that song. Um, could you kind of uh, synopsis that for us? Because I think it's a pretty sure, great Sure, yeah. I, it came out of a, a conversation or it started out with a conversation that I was having with a fellow songwriter, Raghu Lokanathan, and, and I was having a bit of like, you know, that sort of existential crisis that happens in the wee hours of the morning after a music festival. And luckily Raghu was awake. And, I, and I'd and i asked him, you know, how do you sort of um, 
not justify, but find peace in yourself by knowing that sort of the greater industrial complex is ruining our planet and that we live in a place like Prince George where, you know, we're seeing and exposed to that industry daily. And how do you, how do you reconcile those things and, and still, you know, want to be here and want to make community here? And he said, I like living in this dichotomous space. I, I feel I want it in my face every single day. I want to um, have to reconcile with the fact that someone works at a mill and is providing for their family and that I'm a blue collar worker and an artist. And it's like that, that sort of juxtaposition is really fascinating as an artist. And so I took that conversation and, and moved it to a place of, you know, my own personal biases against say the tar sands and how I felt, um, you know, their impact on our ecosystems and, and then someone who chooses to work there and live there and what that place means could potentially mean to them. Um, and so I just kind of started imagining that story, the story of a, a family in that place. And um, yeah, I guess I come back home, I guess, to, to where you were brought up and how you were raised and you have a new sort of perspective on why your parents or other people make the choices that they do. And yeah, so I don't know, it's sort of tangential, but that was, that was sort I don't of think it is at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kate. No, go ahead, Britt. <laughs> um, no, I was just going to say, um, you know, hearing that it's uh, definitely, um, it's like that mournful sort of distance that's being depicted through this person's story that you wrote, you know, like um, that I, I'm just, I'm just trying to think about like the things that really resonated with me. And I think it is, it's like that mournful sort of solitude in, just doing the grind, like doing what you have to do to just keep everything in motion, keep your life in motion. And um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's such a beautiful set of set of uh, lyrics. And and you told the story so so. Um, I, I love the way that you write because you bring a lot of emotion to the table, but it's also very uh, visual. You depict like a very um, clear scene in my mind, like when I'm listening to you. Um, sing and tell these stories and um, I really admire that about your songwriting just that that like because it's not always easy to do you can either be super literal in your delivery um, and and your wordsmithing um, or you can be super emotional but I find it's like rare that a songwriter can bring the two together in a way that's like um, that in a way that's cohesive and, and you do that so well <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for writing such a beautiful song. He's <laughs> <Many> great. <songs, laughs> yeah. 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 You, oh, man. I, I just want to listen to this song again. It's it's actually really interesting. Like, I think uh, I've watched a lot of these interviews now. And, and I think uh, um, when when Jay was being, well, the alchemist was being interviewed, he, his partner, Jessica, had said like, well, what if you don't like the song? How are you going to rearrange your face to like <laughs> fake it, right? And I... You know, but my partner and I were talking about that, and I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate it. I know that, but I, I am one of those people that doesn't care for music the first time I hear it. Really, like, it takes me a while. Like, you know, even if it's one of my favorite artists that comes out with a brand new album that I've been anticipating for a while, I probably won't like it at first glance. Like, I need a couple of listens, and then I kind of fall into it, and then I just fall in love with it." And yeah, so I was more just like, am I gonna be like, cool, Britt wrote a song, she covered my song, but I'm just like, I'm like vibrating now. It was, it's just, it's such an honor, but it's also just like such a good song on its own that happens to have the essence of something that I wrote, but like, you're hugely talented and you're, um, the fact that you did all that alone, like on your own is no small potatoes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, no kidding. Well, thank and, you. And Amy, I mean, you you made reference to the fact that it it it's uh perhaps a little bit unusual. Um, some unusual choices for Brit were were made in this song. Um, so Brit, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what led to those choices and and what maybe you surprised yourself by doing. Yeah, you bet. Um, so it was definitely um, creative work within confines. So like seeing what I have, maybe not what I originally would envision 
um, if I was um, asked to cover this song, if I had access to a full band, if I had access to a full studio, if I had access to a plethora of digital instruments, um, it probably would have sounded very different. Mm -hmm. um, so I was looking at what I had to work with as far as software goes, as far as hardware goes, as far as people go, like it was right in the thick of like the dark, dark winter at that time. So um, it was very much like, this is what I've got. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it was, it was very inspiring in a lot of ways. Um, because yeah, for one, I used um, like a synth patch in there, which isn't sort of a typical instrument choice for me in my work. Mm -hmm. um, but I had so much fun with it. Like I had a blast going through and just trying different things and like actually getting reacquainted with like a keyboard. And um, yeah, I, it was definitely, the choices were made because of the limitations that I was facing as far as um, just access to everything. <laughs> like, uh, so yeah, I, uh, but I, that being said, I'm really, um, I look back and I'm really stoked on that process. And I, I, I kind of love that like MacGyver sort of approach where it's just like, hey, I've got like a matchstick <laughs> and I've got like an old shoe, like make a song, you know? And uh, yeah, I, yeah, so that was that was mostly what informed um, a lot of my decisions, uh, musically speaking, for this track. There's so much creativity to be found in limitation. Like someday totally. we'll have, have a chat about. I wrote a paper about that a long time ago that actually won me an award because Whoa. about like a like dancing with a broken limb or something like that, and how you can create something that's never been created before because of the limitation, not in spite of it. So I think like being forced into using only certain things or only relying on yourself actually made something that is in and of itself the most unique, fantastic version that could be created. Like it's, yeah, very cool. <laughs> I'm just, I'm feeling such a sense of um, relief. <laughs> You know, because it's like, you know, um, you know, uh, I'm thinking about what you were saying about Jay and Jess and how, you know, she asked him, well, what will you do with your face if you don't like it? It's like, what will I do with my face if I see her face do a thing that indicates she doesn't right. like it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to be stoic. Like, <laughs> Look over there and do, you know, yeah. power outage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy that you um, that you liked it. Loved it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so you you both have uh, played music together a lot. You've collaborated on, on a lot of things, both musically and kind of outside of the musical realm. Um, do you think that maybe you'll find new opportunities for collaboration through this project? Do you see kind of potential avenues for for new creative projects? Well, I don't want to speak out of place here. Like we haven't actually collaborated very much. <laughs> I was gonna say funny. That. Yeah. We haven't done that. We, yeah, we, I just we, assume. we, we are involved <laughs> yeah. in, in like around music together, but we've never actually yeah. made music together. And I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, because it, even before this, like Britt did message me about singing and um, and I think like it in converse, if I can speak for us in conversations that we've had, we've both talked about sort of um, like a new era of creativity that's now being afforded to both of us because um, we're trying not to rely on our art to pay the bills um, for better or for worse. And uh, for better or for worse, that does give you like lifts up some of the stress and li lifts some of the pressure to just um, perform or spit out things that you know are going to you know come back to you in a financial way and just to actually again open up some space so um, I think I mentioned before I'm feeling a creative thawing out uh, now that um, COVID is sort of dissipating a little bit and that kind of thing so I'd love to collaborate with Brad I think it's Let's just do more of what you just did. <laughs> I think the fans want it. And by the fans, I of course mean me, um, but yeah. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> yeah. 
So your hope counts for at least a hundred. <laughs> thank you. I feel that. I feel that to be true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Britt, Amy, thank you. Thank you so much for for talking with me tonight and for your contributions to this project. I really appreciate it. Thank you so Absolutely. much for the invitation to be involved. Yeah, it's a really, it was a really cool idea. Thank you. Totally. Yeah, courtesy of Bryn Porter. Yeah. Um, okay, so for those interested, you can find this track at momfest.bandcamp.com. Uh, Mama headed North is the 11th of 19 songs that will be released over the next few months. Next month now, I guess. The full album will be released in about mid-August. Um, and you can stream it, but please, if you can, consider consider purchasing it uh, and supporting Music on the Mountain Society and Future Mom Fest, because there will be Future Mom Fest. Um, yeah, so um, we also gratefully acknowledge the support of the BC Arts Council and um, all of our community partners. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye.